Hey everyone, this is Clint again. Uh, so I, yeah, I want to do a video on propaganda and comics because this topic comes up a lot. And uh, I think there are some sort of gray areas and some things that I, I personally th I think these are interesting. Uh, so I'm hoping that you do too. Uh, but I think before we dive into this, it's important to look at definitions uh, because words mean something. First, straight news, or also it's also known as hard news. Uh, there are stories that report only the most essential information in a concise and impartial manner are referred to as straight or hard news stories. This type of story typically follows the inverted pyramid style, which organizes information by descending order from importance or places the most newsworthy information at the beginning of the article. This style will be discussed in more detail below. Okay. Uh, yeah, so examples here are, are hard news stories include those about politics, topics, and crime. Now, I uh, went to school uh, for journalism, and uh, I remember we learned this a lot at the beginning, and uh, the reality is that the, there's not a lot of hard, straight news reporting nowadays, especially not on politics. Uh, it actually happens more on a local level, uh, certainly not on, on big national levels. But it is still a thing, and if you can find... Uh, good straight news, if that's what you're looking for, hard news. Uh, this is the definition. So uh, straight news is not propaganda. So propaganda, I'm going to use uh, Merriam-Webster's definition here, and we would be on probably two or three is the correct definition. The spreading of ideas, information, or rumor for the purpose of helping or injuring an institution, a cause, or a person. Okay, so the difference here is Straight news is just reporting just the facts, and the facts are right up front. Their opinion is not in straight news. There is no opinion. Propaganda has a role to play. It's not just spreading ideas, because straight news is also spreading, uh, I mean, not even really ideas, just facts, uh, but it's also, it, it has a purpose. So the purpose behind it is to help or injure an institution, cause, or person. And then definition three, which also applies ideas, facts, or allegations spread deliberately to further one's cause or to damage an opposing cause. Okay, so last definition that I want to go over, and this one's just going to be uh, yeah, on Quora. This is, uh, you know, just right on Google. Satire is a style of humor that uses ridicule, often on political topics, but not always. Satire is not usually politically balanced, but it may be. One-sided satire is not the same thing as propaganda. However, if satire is used to make a political point, it can be very effective and stealthy propaganda. So how does this all relate to comics? Uh, I, th I think it's important because, you know, a lot of the, the criticisms that are coming out of Comicsgate on mainstream comics, uh, I'll often hear that uh, comics are becoming propaganda. And by the definition of propaganda, I actually, in, in uh, some, not just some cases, in many cases... I think it is absolutely true to anybody that says, well, yeah, well, all comics are propaganda. It's all pushing something. No, that's not, that's not true. We just looked at the definitions and, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're pushing an idea to either help a cause or hurt a cause, that is propaganda and not all comics do that. Uh, historically comics have been propaganda and, uh, there's tons of examples, especially in time of war. But not always. Uh, many, you know, a lot of the time, comics are just storytelling, or sometimes they're satire. Um, but propaganda, you know, they they sort of comics have uh, played with propaganda quite a bit over history. So, what's the difference between an obvious propaganda comic uh, that you agree with, or an obvious propaganda comic that you don't agree with? Uh, whether you agree with the message or you don't agree with the message. It doesn't change the definition of what propaganda is. Uh, think of propaganda not so much as it's this um, just inherently evil thing. It's a tool. It's a method that uh, people use to convince others uh, that something is good or bad. So if I'm trying to be objective here, just from this one image, there's uh, Miss Marvel uh, letting, trying to lead the way for all the uh, all the minorities to be able to go and vote and uh yeah she's gotta walk over some men to do that satire i think by those definitions is really hard to determine 
uh, when satire is just satire and when satire is propaganda. Um, in the, the case of the Colbert Report, um, I used to watch that show quite a bit. And it could definitely be funny sometimes. Um, you know, only a lot of times I thought it was funny. But uh, the interesting thing is that uh, Stephen Colbert was playing a part. He was literally becoming a straw man argument. Um, he identified sort of a, a conservative pundit. He acted like a buffoon. Um, and, you know, it, it's funny. But when people start believing that that is what the other side thinks, uh, that that's you know, a sort of how conservatives are represented, then it definitely crosses over into propaganda. Again, by the definitions that we just looked at. Now, uh, do I think that anybody should, there should be consequences for making propaganda? I mean, you have freedom of speech. Uh, propaganda happens all of the time. It happens everywhere. Uh, I, I honestly think it's more of an individual responsibility to know what kind of media you're looking at and to be able to be critical of it. Uh, if you enjoy uh, bits of, of propaganda, uh, I mean, go for it there. You know, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, especially if you agree with it, I guess uh, what I do have a problem with though, is it being enforced upon me or um, when propaganda takes hold and it um, it's used to, instead of promote an idea, it's used to damage an idea or a person or something like that, then I think propaganda becomes a lot more harmful. So why in comics has there been so much propaganda? Comics is usually thought of as like a, a medium for children or, uh, you know, and you know, I'm an, I'm a grown man. I really enjoy comics today. Uh, but there, there's still propaganda there. It's entertainment and, uh, yeah, it's, it's placed in there from time to time. So I wanted to show a little bit of, this is uh, world war two propaganda. And if, uh, you're American and, uh, you don't like Nazis, then this isn't going to be super offensive. Uh, but know that this is by definition, this is propaganda. And I'm only going to show a little bit because I don't want to get like a community strike or anything like that. This is just educational. Then Hulk Doring says, they'll never bomb this place. The hail, hail, right in her Doring's face. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, uh, but you'll see the same things. This is actually satire. If you are interested in looking this up, go for it. The Fewer's face. Um, it, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, propaganda doesn't have to be boring or scary. Satire is absolutely and can be propaganda. And this is just one case of that. You know, propaganda serves a couple of purposes, uh, especially in times of war. It's important because one, it lets you blow off steam against somebody that you're at war against, um, which also helps dehumanize your enemy. Uh, that's why in every war that I can think of, enemies were given uh, derogatory names and uh, that that was the sort of the name that they gave them like I'm thinking for Germans so that's probably the only one I can say without getting in trouble uh, but they were called krauts often and uh, that was derogatory and it was you could say dehumanizing and for some reason when something is funny um, it's it's disarming right and it helps you to uh, I guess, agree with it more, sort of settle into your point of view, and you're really mocking the other side. Now, not all satire is propaganda. We already looked at the definitions. Uh, satire is great. Uh, propaganda is just a reality. I'm not saying that, that uh, you know, propaganda, anybody that has ever used propaganda in the history of the world is is somehow evil, because literally every single country has used propaganda in, in different forms all throughout history. It's just part of the human experience, I guess, especially for war. And in fact, a lot of this is pretty interesting, but um, even today, these are old historical uh, little propaganda leaflets that were dropped. I wouldn't say that these are comics exactly, but they're frightening pictures. Uh, they're, they've got messages. And yeah, these would be dropped over cities uh, before they were going to be bombed or sometimes just whenever. 
And uh, yeah, it was to, to, to convince people uh, that their government was bad or that uh, an invading government was good or, or something like that. And there's, in fact, stories from the Vietnam War about, uh, I, I guess, the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese people believed that when uh, somebody died, if they weren't buried, then their ghost would wander and, and haunt, I guess. I'm probably summarizing that incorrectly. Uh, but uh, the American army would actually play over loudspeakers uh, Vietn Vietnamese voices uh, saying something like you can't die out here alone, you know, things like that. So uh, it was psychologically hard for the Vietnamese people because of their, you know, their belief and their culture that there would be consequences for not having a proper burial. Okay, so tying this all into comics, uh, I, there's this article, Patton Oswald said this a little while ago, but there's this concept called social responsibility, and you hear about social justice a lot. Um, social responsibility is sort of a big business or a corporation's uh, responsibility to the people. And when you look at Patton Oswald's view on it, uh, it, it sort of brings things into a clearer picture. He says, I think we have a social responsibility whether we want to or not. Oswald said, we can't just get on stage and talk about dating or airline food anymore. My question is, why not? And that's because there's, he feels a social responsibility. He can, uh, let's see, Oswald spoke with Washington Post pop culture reporter Ilay Izzadi. Oswald, 49, has long been a, pro a proponent of comedy in service of advocacy and activism. If you see comedy as activism, it's not entertainment or it can be entertainment in part, it can be satire in part, but it's activism, and that's an important concept. Comedy is meant to be a means of interrogating the times in which we live and the values we hold. Oswald has often argued, pointing to the work of comedians such as Richard Pryor and George Carlin, known for provocative, socially-minded material, but today's landscape leaves so little room for truly progressive comedy, especially when both sides are out for blood rather than genuine dialogue oswald said so is marvel comics uh propaganda or dc comics propaganda are they putting propaganda uh into their stories now remember propaganda doesn't happen by accident it's intentional by definition that is the intent of it so they're actually scoring systems uh csr for corporate responsibility and th this is taught in colleges all the time this is why uh, a lot of new companies start up and they've got young, you know, young uh, CEOs or, you know, young entrepreneurs fresh out of college. And they're sort of running with the ideas that they learned about social responsibility and that their responsibility is not to provide a service that people want. It's it's not about capitalism or capitalism is secondary uh, to the goal of social responsibility. And so these are actually stats or a grading system for uh, Marvel Entertainment on how socially responsibility responsible they are so if you're under this kind of scrutiny to uh, you know show how how your hiring practices are let's see uh, diversity and labor rights uh, how your uh, how your how you think about human rights how you think about uh, the climate how you think about uh, leadership and ethics and again, if you're if you're looking at social responsibility, when you're talking about ethics, you're being very specific about ethics. So when there's a value system uh, that you're sort of being graded on, of course that's going to make its way into your comics uh, because of the hiring practice. You're hiring people uh, based on the way that they look, rather than rather than merit, because merit becomes secondary. So comics actually have a major incentive. Uh, to be socially minded and so it's no wonder why you're going to get things you're going to get messages that that are intended to change the way that you think or to make something else look negative some of them you know you might agree with or you might think oh that's benign it's not it's not a problem so w next time somebody says that well all entertainment is propaganda if you look at it that way uh, no that's not true because it all has to do with intent and what the, the, the purpose of it is. The word propaganda means something. 
so th this stuff really interests interests me i hope that was interesting for you too uh please you know comment down below let me know your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet we are going to be uh, reaching for 2,000 subscribers so thank you very much and i will see you next time <laughs>